Where are we going here? Where are we going with this one? Well, Arkansas just lost 27-24 to a very beatable LSU team. The streak extends to five games. And first of all, kudos to Sam Pittman for showing a lot of class in the post-game press conference, not criticizing the referees heavily. Am I about to show a lack of class? Maybe. Before I get to why Mark Curls is a terrible referee and should never call another Arkansas game again, which is something we've been saying since like 2009, like why do I know only his name? Out of every referee in the SEC, why do I only know Mark Curls? Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Arkansas was 0 of 10 on third downs. So we can talk about the officiating stuff here in a minute, but 0 of 10 on third downs. You, you can't expect to win a game like that, especially when your opponent's 12 of 23. And it's especially disappointing for Arkansas, I know, because that was a big emphasis this week after the Florida game, getting off the field on third downs on defense, staying on the field on third downs on offense. They only had the one fourth down conversion, which was a big one that they had to have, but they only had the one. Arkansas also went one of four on replays. And really, you know, that last one was LSU's decision to, to challenge uh, the, the almost touchdown in the end zone, which he didn't complete the catch. But, like, so the fumble earlier in the game, it's a fumble. It's recovered by Joe Fouché. He gets up with the ball in his hands. And they go back on replay, and it's a fumble, but there's not a clear recovery? I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I literally, I could, I can. I do believe it. I do believe it happened because I know who was out there officiating. The Catalan hit late in the game. So you lose Catalan for the first half of the Missouri game. He was trying not to hit the guy. He was bracing. He never made contact with his helmet. I don't know that he made contact with his shoulder pads in his helmet. But I, was, I, I could not believe that that upheld. I mean, I can. Again, I can believe it. After what you've been through watching Arkansas games, you absolutely can believe that that just happened. Terrible, terrible job. The referees deserve to get a boot off the field. Mark Curl should never call a game. I said I was going to wait and talk about that at the end, but he should never call another Arkansas game. He does a terrible job consistently. Like, does other teams in the SEC, do they feel like Mark Curls just completely robs them game after game? Again, though, putting all that stuff aside, there was a time in the game when I felt like Arkansas was down by about 17 and they were up by one. I mean, there's just – you can't go 0 of 10 and run the – and the reason is because you ran the ball the way you did. I mean, I think uh, Traylon Smith was 11 carries for 28 yards, and then T.J. Hammonds comes in and has one carry for 29 yards. Felipe Franks, what was he, 17 carries or something like that? I mean, a lot of carries. 43 yards is what I think he ended up with. Um, he was also solid throwing the ball, but they waited too long to start going deep. I mean, it was like 344 left in the second quarter right before halftime. Before they finally went deep, they had a 50-yarder to, uh, to Mike Woods. So it was like feast or famine. I mean, there were plenty of big plays. I think Mike Woods had two 50-yarders, four catches for like 140 yards. Traylon had only six touches, though, which isn't enough touches for Traylon Burks. I also thought he was interfered with uh, on a slant pattern early in the game. This game was very, very winnable. And we got to talk about the defensive line. You know, if there's a position group where Arkansas can afford to take some hits, probably defensive line, They, you know, it, especially at defensive end. But can they lose their top four defensive ends? There was no pass rush. And, I mean, he, Finley just had all day to throw. I mean, that was, that was a huge, huge, huge part of this game was, you know, he's just standing back there. You, you never had a chance to hit him. And Arkansas went three down linemen the entire game. They never went to a four down lineman. Uh, sometimes they just had defensive tackles at defensive end. That's how, that's how the situation was. So that's a difficult, that's a difficult deal when you, you have so many defensive linemen out. And it wasn't just the ends. You also had your starter, Isaiah Nichols, your, you know, maybe your top backup, maybe a guy. Appreciate it. Thank you. Maybe a, uh, you know, a guy that's a starter and Xavier Kelly was out. I mean, really, like, 
six of your top seven defensive linemen are out of the game. So that's tough, especially against a team like LSU, who's, you know, as Pittman was saying, you know, just got one 320, 340 pounder after another one on the offensive line uh, and had a lot of time to get healed up. There was a lot going against Arkansas heading into this one, just, you know, with the COVID stuff, uh, with LSU having, you know, basically what amounts to three weeks off, really just missing two weeks, really, because they had to buy and they missed the Alabama game. So they had a lot of time to heal up, a lot of time to fix some things, a lot of time to work with their young quarterback, Finley, um, again, who looked like a million bucks because he had all day long to throw. Arkansas just could not get any pressure on him, and that's certainly understandable considering how much they've lost. Pittman's never going to say this, but Arkansas, they've got to you know, continue to get bigger. They've got to recruit more. It can't be situations where you lose a guy like Jalen Catalan. Um, and you're just, and it's just devastating, you know, because like a team like LSU, that's something that, that they have the luxury of doing. They can go and get another guy who's really, really talented, who's got a good chance of making some plays for you. Time of possession, it felt like Arkansas never had the ball. 41-43 to 18-17. Arkansas had the ball for 18 minutes and 17 seconds. That's just, that's just not enough. And again, it comes down to not being able to run the ball effectively. A lot of that's on the Arkansas offensive line. And of course, you know, they were without two offensive linemen again. They didn't have Bo Lemmer. Uh, they didn't have Noah Gatlin. They're, they're two starters on the right side. And that's difficult too. I mean, when you talk about like what separates Arkansas from a lot of these upper tier SEC teams, and again, this LSU team is a, a beatable LSU team this year. But what separates Arkansas uh, is, is a lot of the size up front and the depth, of course, and especially depth on defense. because. Skill guys, I mean, they're pretty good there. Uh, they're pretty good in the secondary, pretty good at linebacker. Don't have a lot of depth at linebacker, but they got a couple of good ones. But it's just the, it's just the size. You don't have like a, a great pass rusher. You know, they had Matteo Soli, who I'm not even sure if he has a right hand. I mean, the last two years he's played with a club on his hand. That's all. I mean. Poor guy, I, I, I don't even understand like how he's as effective as he is with that. So, um, yeah, they got to continue to recruit bigger players up front and get more depth. That's that's going to be what's going to take Arkansas to the next level. But you know, I, I hear, you know, and, and and it's deserved. I think you know, with, with Kendall Brown, some of the play calls there, you know, why didn't they go start going deep earlier? Like I said, it was feast or famine as far as picking up yardage, they couldn't run the ball. I mean, they'd be out in 30 seconds, three and out, boom, boom, boom. I mean, like the first four drives, I think they only picked up one first down, but they were, again, 0 of 10, 0 of 10. So I would have liked to have seen them take more shots early, maybe loosen that defense up a little bit. Maybe they could get the running game going that way. Um, Grant Morgan had 19 tackles. I mean, I, I, you can't even believe, Morgan went over 100 tackles for the season. They, they're eight games in. I mean, there was a good chance that nobody was going to get 100 tackles on the team with a limited schedule like they have. And you might have three guys go over 100 tackles this season. Catalan had 16 before he was ejected. I don't know, is, is there a way to like go to the SEC office like, can you take a look at this? The thing that sucks about it is like it goes to review. They go in and review. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was looking at it, I was like, there's no way that they're going to uphold this. And, of course, they did. And the fumble, I, I, don't, I don't understand that either. But um, penalties weren't a huge issue in the game, aside from that. I mean, that's going to impact them the next week. Jalen Catalan's probably their best defender. I think he is. Get you a look at the, uh, where is it right there? The fountain side of the stadium. Arkansas is chipping away at it. And I don't expect, you know, everybody to be perfect the whole time, but let's talk about the special teams now. I know it took me like 10 minutes to get into special teams, but they cost them every single game. There, I don't know if there's been a game where it's just been like, oh, special teams pretty good. So, First of all, in the second half of the third quarter, they can't get the punt return team out there. If they can't decide if they want, I guess, set punt safe or return safe or, or you know, punt block or, or what out there, and they have to call a timeout. A timeout they probably could have used there at the end of the game when they needed to stop LSU and get the ball back. 
And then, of course, you, you know, on the key moment of the game where you have a field goal to try to tie the game, send it in overtime. I don't know. I can't even remember how much time was left. Not a whole lot of time. So LSU might have gone down there. But still, it didn't matter because you get a 44-yard attempt that's very makeable, and you get it blocked. You get it blocked. That's the play of the game right there. Another special team's gaff, time after time. And I can understand, you know, with COVID and, you know, you're mixing guys in and out of there, but it's just, it's every single game. There is something bad happens with special teams. They've got to get it figured out. There's no other, there's no other explanation other than they've, <laughs> they've just got to get it figured out. I don't want to come down too hard on Scott Fountain because again, I do understand you've had to work a lot of guys in there, but again, it's every single week every single week. What else is there to say? Mark Carls, you're a terrible referee. You've been a terrible referee since I've known you since 2009, since you basically stole the Arkansas game um, in, in Florida. I mean, you had, there, those were two terrible results out of the reviews. I mean, there's no way that Jalen Catalan should have been kicked out of that game. I don't know that I don't know what the announcers say. Like I'll go home and watch the game and stuff here in a little bit. I don't know what like people were saying on TV. But in the press box, everybody was stunned. Everybody was stunned with the fumble too. I mean, that's a fumble in LSU territory. Now Arkansas ended up getting the ball back, but it was like a difference of like 50 yards. Big game at LSU, or excuse me, at LSU. Big game at Missouri next week. Mark Curls, man. I mean, I, I don't understand how you like, like as, as Pittman, I understand you get fined when you complain about the rest, but again, I don't understand how you can keep your trap shut on that one. I know I would be fine. Kudos, a lot of class, Sam, but I still feel like things headed in the right direction. This is a very winnable game. This is probably the first game I would say Arkansas had a real chance at winning that they didn't win, along with Auburn, asterisk. All right, everybody. A little bit different parking area for me today. They moved us because of the rain. 27-24, Arkansas Falls. What does that make them, three and five? A lot better than anybody thought they would be. Very easily, very easily could, could have five wins right now very easily could be the other way around on that schedule. Well, we're going to wrap it up. Not much else to say. Arkansas hurt themselves plenty of times, couldn't get anything going on third down. And it was the opposite way for LSU. And then, of course, you know, you get hosed on a couple of calls that, that really, really hurt them. Would have liked to see more shots early. Maybe T.J. Hammond starts getting some more action. One carry for 29 yards, had a long catch. Well, how long did that catch go, 40, something like that? So maybe we'll see more of TJ. Anyway, got to get healthy, got to get Rakeem Boyd back, got to get a couple of those offensive linemen back, continue to recruit, get those D linemen back for Missouri. You got a good shot at winning that one. All right, everybody. It's been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. We'll catch you next time.